Today I'm going to be talking about the math and science in the sport of basketball. The three parts of basketball that I'm going to be talking about today, that's basketball in it, is the three-point shot, crossovers, and chase down block. Here comes George, got the step and smokes how did Paul George get past one of the best defenders in the game? It can be explained by using math and science. But first, we have to rewind and see what went wrong. Paul George uses a slight hesitation and a cross to get LeBron James' momentum going in one direction, while Paul George can easily speed up and go the other. After Paul George gets past LeBron James, he then uses his full momentum and his force and turns it into vertical height and dunks on Chris Anderson, a.k.a. Birdman. Well, the crossover is, is effective uh, because it gives you space. What I'm doing mostly is, uh, is I'm coming at a guy and I'm acting like I'm going one direction. So my body is going forward and with a step, but then I'm bringing it back real quick. And once I bring it back, that gives me the second um, to be able to go into my next move. The goal of a crossover is to get your opponent momentum going one direction while you go the other. It's pretty simple, but it's really effective. The three-pointer is the most difficult shot to make in the NBA today. The normal release angle for a three-pointer is around 45 degrees. But Steph Curry, one of the best three-point shooters in the game, suits around between 50 and 55 degrees. Ray Allen, on the other hand, shoots at that perfect 45. So it's different between player and player. It's amazing, I'm the reason Everybody fired up this evening I'm exhausted, barely breathing Holding on to what I believe And no matter what, you'll never take that from me My rain is as far as your eyes can see It's amazing, so amazing, so amazing so amazing, it's amazing, so amazing, so amazing, so amazing, it's amazing. I'm a monster, I'm a killer, I know I'm wrong, yeah. I'm a problem that I never ever be solved, and no. It's amazing, so amazing, so amazing, so amazing. Oh, it's blocked by LeBron, out of nowhere. OJ Mayo rejected by the King. On this play, OJ Mayo gets an eight-foot head start on LeBron. And when he receives the pass, he's a full 16 feet in front. Yet LeBron's pursuit is relentless. From the free throw line, it takes Mayo four seconds to get to the bucket. But in just 10 strides, LeBron gets there in only 3.1 seconds, 22% faster than Mayo. Only 150 milliseconds after Mayo releases the ball. LeBron smashes it like an elite volleyball spike. Crushing the ball with almost 30 Gs of acceleration. 
the backboard absorbs 29% of the ball's kinetic energy, yet it ricochets 25 feet, more than a quarter of the length of the court. But what's most amazing is LeBron's timing. To execute the block without fouling or goaltending, he must hit a window of opportunity open for only 324 milliseconds. As you can see, the chase down block is one of the most difficult plays to make in the NBA. Not many players can do it anymore. Here's some footage of the few chase down blocks I can find. 